Uh, I'm Alexis Valentine. My name is Justin Flatline. And we are from Once Upon a Flatline. You're listening to Brutally Delicious. Hey, you are listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. I am Bruce. And this is Rena from Silentium joining you once again. She decided to come back because yeah, Bruce was failing so hard. She realized <laughs> just how important she was to the show. <laughs> got to save that, the show so we got Rena back. Yeah. That, that and also I have I have like zero content in my existence. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we're just a, a notch above having nothing. Yeah, yeah. When yeah, you I have think- nothing, you join Chris and Bruce on the Brutally Delicious <laughs> podcast. <laughs> exactly. So today we are going to be uh, speaking with Once Upon a Flatline. So uh, you guys had a chance to listen to these guys yet? Yeah, yeah. Check checked out a song. They have a very cool look. Yeah, the they video, definitely look really good. Their videos look pretty slick. So if you want to hang on, we'll go ahead and grab them. <laughs> Sounds Perfect. Good. You're, you're speaking with uh, Alexis Valentine and Justin Flatline. Awesome. And we've got, I'm Bruce. We've got Chris, my partner, and Rena as well. Say hello, hello everyone. Serena. <laughs> hello. Uh, Good morning. I love that we're all just talking on top of each other. That's this awesome. <laughs> Nothing but the best. Always the best. <laughs> Definitely. We just got to give each other like numbers. I'll be one. You'll be two. <laughs> I will say this, though. Their voices sound pretty slick right now. True, true, true. Why? Don't you guys. Why do we sound slick? Yeah. What mic are you using? Just a, just a MacBook, honestly. <laughs> Interesting. So I will go ahead and jump and get the conversation started then. So for those not familiar with Once Upon a Flatline, can you give us the two-sentence boardroom pitch? Yeah, so um, Once Upon a Flatline is a theatrical metal band from Buffalo, New York. Wow, that was perfect. It was one Thanks. sentence. I love that. <laughs> How are you guys uh, handling... Not being able to play at shows in in this whole crazy pandemic, are you doing anything special to interact with your fans? Um, we have done a couple live streams, a um, couple contests. We really we were really all about just like signing into Facebook Live whenever we're together and just kind of checking in with people. Although it has like like most musicians' experience, it has really sucked not being able to play shows. We have so much stuff. We're tour ready. We're show ready. We were looking into van rentals before COVID, and we have a crap ton of t-shirts that are just sitting in our attic right now so you know just trying to stay positive it's it's really nothing you can do about it so i'd rather people be safe and alive and keep the peak down than play a show you know oh sure hopefully hopefully all our favorite venues will be there next year and uh yeah (laughs) I, i hope they stay open you know that's my biggest concern about the industry right now is what's going to happen to the venues yeah I don't know what's going to happen to them. It seems like I know here in Richmond anyway, some of the bigger ones are doing fundraisers now and doing all kinds of odd things to try and get people in the door to at least, you know, support them more or that thing. Yeah. Here in DC, they're actually renting out, <clears throat> excuse me. They're actually renting out like, you know, the, uh, the signs out front that they put letters on. They're renting them out for photo shoots. So you can pay them 200 bucks for 15 minutes and they'll change the sign for you and you can go take a picture in front of it. Oh, like for a wedding or an anniversary or something? Yeah. That's actually a really cool idea. Like, you know, obviously, like, times of turmoil are the times of innovation. So there's, like, going to be good stuff coming from there. But it's a real concern. What's going to happen to the venues? (laughs) Where are we going to play in 2022 if this, you know, still goes on? So how long have you guys been at it? Like, how how old of a band is is Once Upon a a Flatline? in that line sorry <laughs> you're fine um alexis and i decided to start the band in october of 2017 i want to say uh-huh. i had um uh, we were living together in an apartment in uh, in buffalo and uh, i was writing some songs and i because i just I, I missed like performing you know it's really the only thing i've ever been good at and all that jazz so i started writing some songs and uh, by the time the songs were done being written, it occurred to me that in no way, shape, or form could I perform the songs. So I asked Alexis if she wouldn't mind uh, coming on as a singer. And uh, she said, oh, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it the right way. 
So from there, we found the rest of the members of our band and so on and so forth. And yeah, the rest is history. When did, when did we go live online with the band, though? That was in June of 2018, I want to say. Yeah, so we, Justin and I wrote basically our entire EP about a year out before we even announced that we were a band. Because one of the things, it might be a personal pet peeve, but one of the things that really irks me about a lot of local bands um, is they'll post t-shirts and like a rough song and they'll call themselves a band and make a Facebook page and spend all this money on networking and advertising to build up their likes. But then they'll post, hey, looking for a drummer, two guitarists and a bassist. It's like, honey, that's not a band then. So I wanted to make sure we had a solid lineup, people equally dedicated to the music as we were before we announced anything because without a drummer, without a second guitarist, without a bassist, we were we were really just two people writing songs on an acoustic guitar, which still is a band, just not the kind of band we were looking for. More like a be. Simon and Garfunkel as opposed to a metal band from Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a smart approach. You know, I, although, I tend to- although I would like to hear like guttural vocals, you know, with an acoustic guitar. It's not something you hear every day. That would be pretty metal though. Yeah, that would be cool. We do perform just the two of us, just uh none of that stuff yet, but don't give Justin any ideas. That'll be our that'll be our next gig. I have that written down, thank you. Maybe your next busking gig will be on this on a street corner in Buffalo in like December. <laughs> you guys could pull it off in the middle of a snowstorm. Oh God, we'll see. It's it's seventy degrees here the past two weeks, so nice, I don't know. Isn't it? I'm in DC. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. It's the calm before the storm here in Buffalo, so we uh, we get hit with the snow pretty bad. For Rena, <laughs> Rena, that's about twenty one, twenty two. So, okay, thank <laughs> thank you. I refuse to learn your ridiculous system of numbers. <laughs> Sorry, for those I guess you don't know, Rena is from Finland. She's the oddball out here with the weird metric system. The, what are you the weird metric system? The <laughs> I think you mean the sensible oh. metric system. No, Thank you. No, no. Obviously, obviously, you're near Canada. Yeah, no. Uh, honestly, I'm. I was uh, hoping Buffalo would just like cut itself off and float over to Canada the past <laughs> year. Like, please. Oh my gosh. I found out how much a COVID test costs, and free healthcare sounds really good right about now. So. <laughs> yeah, we can in Finland too. Just head on over. Okay, we will. You have hockey there too, yeah. We're oh, big hockey fans. Oh, so. I was gonna ask you, are you Sabres fans? We are Sabres fans. Oh my gosh, we got screwed so bad this year. Oh, terrible. <laughs> so yeah, we're Sabres fans. What, what, did you, what, what did you think of my home country, Canada, the way they pulled off the playoffs this year? Do you wanna answer that one, Jane? <laughs> I thought it was a really good idea. Like everyone coming to like the uh, the stadiums and bringing all the teams together, as opposed to having fans like be there and such, and having the teams travel to other cities and stuff, and uh, they pulled off what I thought was a really cool like the, the whole like the preliminary round before the playoffs that they did. I thought was a really cool like way to kind of build into the playoffs. And I watched most of the games because I have a buddy who's an Islanders fan. Hey, so hey, was- that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was bummed they didn't make it this particular year, but uh, I don't know. I thought they handled it really well. I was really impressed, and a lot of the teams stayed really safe, and that was a, a big thing. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a crazy world right now. Back to music. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. I can get off. I can talk hockey all day. I mean, I'm from Canada. I can talk hockey. Like, you know, I I learned before I learned to walk, I could cross check properly. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a T-shirt that says that. What's that? What's that? I would wear a T-shirt that said that. Oh, it's a song in Canada. Is it really? Yeah, I'll send it to you on Skype. Oh, it, thank you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's called "Out for a Rip," and it's, it's just a bunch of bunch. It's about a bunch of Canadian rednecks. <laughs> so, <That's anyways>. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyways, so from a technology point of view, how do you guys approach recording? Um, we currently are recording right now with a friend of ours named Nate White. Um, we record at his house. Um, it's been a lot of trial and error. Our very first song we ever released is actually not available anymore. We re-released it this year, which was for the Wretched of the Earth. Um, that one wasn't recorded with Nate White. That one took almost an entire year to record a single song. Uh, we were just a baby band then. Um, so now we're working with Nate. However, we are looking at recording with Nate and... I don't know, maybe doing some research on 
uh, music engineers and people to mix our music that specialize in female vocals from here on out. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with what Nate does. It's just, you know, it's nice to explore options and meet new people and network and stuff. So. Yeah, but are you guys using software to write or are you just uh, sitting down no. and recording it as a, as a, like a iPhone memo or whatever? Um, Justin is king of iPhone memos. There is like a thousand like hummed patterns and drum taps and I don't know, riffs just like over and over again. And we also use our, our phones, uh, to write our lyrics too. Usually just like hundreds of notes of like single lines that we uh, put into our songs. Cool. Can you hear Bruce really grunting in the background? Do you guys hear that? Come on. Really again? <laughs> <laughs> Rena and I had Rena and I had a deal. She was supposed to message me if that was happening. You didn't say a word. I did not even pay attention. I didn't like. You're <laughs> fucking <laughs> creepiness by now, Bruce. <laughs> leave, leave it to the audio engineer to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Some only when there's like a female guest. So, okay, um, sorry. I'm getting <laughs> offline here. I'm getting off topic. Get back on topic. Damn it. <laughs> Bruce? I'm kidding. You're kidding. He's not. He's not creepy. He's not weird. He, he's not. <laughs> okay. Oh, <you're laughs> <the story. Don't> worry. <laughs> no, he is. A little. A little weird is good. We're we're pretty weird. So <laughs> yeah, it's good weird only. Yeah, good weird only. So, is there a, a message or a takeaway you want your fans to walk away with after listening to uh, one of your songs or one of your records or even leaving one of your shows? Yeah. Um. Actually, when it comes to the message, it's probably as important as the music is to us. Um, we have a couple platforms that we really like to make vocal with our music. One of them is obviously being the front man of the band and also being female. Female fronted is not a genre, is one of my biggest passions. Um, equality for women in the metal scene is so important. Uh, you see, I'm, I'm sure you see it time and time again, just the inequality in the music scene for women. Um, secondly, we have a song that just, was re-released called For the Wretched of the Earth and that song is like I would say our, probably our anthem it was the first song we ever released um, and we felt with the way 2020 was going and how much we've progressed as musicians we wanted to re-record it and re-release it so it sounds better bigger, fuller um, and the chorus of that song is whether or not the world is listening we are the people and we will sing each one of us has a reason why we fight the darkest night will end and hope will become our light um, that can be interpreted in so many ways, but to just keep fighting, keep believing, um, and just hope for everything at the end of the day, that's really all we have. And in 2020, I feel like that is so important. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's easy to agree with. And, and <clears throat> I'm with you girl on the whole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Hard. Girl power. Yes. Girls have to stick together. You know, we're, uh, we're already in second place. Girls against girls is so useless to me as well and that's just another societal standard that you know girls have to be envious of each other and fight each other and you know we're breaking that glass ceiling together you know <laughs> yeah breach sister fuck yeah <laughs> i have a question for you do you find it strange that rena's from finland but speaks with an american accent and rolls her r's like she's from mexico <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i uh I really like her accent. I, I uh, wouldn't have guessed Finland, but I wouldn't have guessed anything really. I just been like cool. I'll, cultural tell, you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. She joined us as a guest for her band Silentium, which is unbelievable. You should check them out for sure. They're such a good band. Um, what are you signed yeah. with, Rena? Out of line. Uh, yeah, out of line. Yeah. And um, we had so much fun with her. We asked her if she'd go host the show with us. <laughs> That was probably the most ridiculous show ever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was ridiculous. I urge you, if you if if you're into potty humor, uh, I would go take a listen to the original Rena episode because it's uh, it's over the line. Um, it, well, over the can. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm doing my inside jokes now. Sorry. <laughs> oh God! Only the people that listen are going to get this, and I feel terrible. But right, Bruce is probably going to edit us all out anyway, so he's just going to leave it mostly about the music. Um, <laughs> so where would you guys tour, like, outside the States, if you had the choice? Could just go anywhere. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. We uh, Our drummer is a really, 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 really big uh, 
anime fan. He's gone to Japan quite a few times, so we probably have to put Japan on our list. Their music is incredible too. Metal from Japan is next next level shit. We uh are we've made a, a list of playlists of different kind of like metal anime themes and post hardcore bands from Japan to listen to to influence us for our next album actually. Um everything to be bigger and orchestral and you know so that would be cool. Um, we would head your direction. We're used to the cold, so I am not a tropical climate girl, despite being Indonesian. I'm not a above 80 kind of person, so the colder the better, personally, but I think the fellows would disagree with me. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know about that. Yeah, no, I, I do not like the heat. I turn, I bloom like a desert flower the second I'm in the sun. I can't be goth anymore. It's terrible. <laughs> I go from, I go from like Elvira to Moana in like one trip. To the <laughs> 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 oh, I kind of feel like I get like Monica hair, you know, if it gets humid. Like I look like a, uh, I don't know, like. <laughs> I, I can say anything. This is going to be politi- politically incorrect. So no, no, you should say. <laughs> yeah, it. no, it's it's bad. My hair just absorbs all of the moisture in the air. It's bad. It's bad. I get you. I know what you mean. <laughs> Buff- <laughs> Buffalo gets humid, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it sucks. Our summers are really hot, and then our winters are, you know, Canadian. So. <laughs> They're cold as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That's <laughs> oh. all. Well, I hope you guys get to do both tours, and if you guys do head this way, I'll, I'll be sure to sure to buy you a beer and come come check out the show. Oh there yes, you thank you. We, yeah. we are beer fans as well. <laughs> we have plenty. So, so what do you guys? Oh, speaking of beer, let me just sidetrack you. Did you see that pic? I had a beer last night, Hardywood Brewery Christmas Pancake Stout. <laughs> oh my Holy gosh. fuck! <laughs> How was it? Oh, it was so amazing, dude. Totally amazing. Fucking creepy. The label was so creepy. Like I'm, I was there. It was like two a.m. I have insomnia, so I was there. Yeah. Going I, was, I was ignoring your comments, but it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not a craft beer guy. I don't get. Uh, do you guys get craft beer? Who gets craft beer besides Bruce? I get craft beer. Thank you. I have difficulty drinking beers that weren't made by someone I know. Yeah, there's, like, See, a, there's like a brewery on every corner in <laughs> Buffalo now. So I'm an IPA girl, and Justin's more of a sour guy. I think sours are disgusting, though. It tastes like the beer spoiled. I don't know the hype. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a stout person. I like it uh, dark and thick. A nice coffee, chocolatey, dark yeah. beer. Yeah. I, f- I feel that. I can I could drink a stout when the occasion calls for it. The second it snows, I'll be like, yes, bring me all the dark beer. So. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so what do you guys have planned uh, for the rest of this year and uh, the beginning of next until we can start getting moving again, you think? Um, well, we're currently finishing our EP. We are taking a little more time than originally planned just because, from observation, releasing music in 2020 hasn't really, I don't know, reaped any benefits for bands around us Um it kind of seems like everything's on on pause, which is fair. So we're finishing up our EP, and we're currently sitting on what I think is our best single slash our best music video, which is called Requiem of the Vantum. Um, all of our songs on our EP are inspired by different Broadway musicals, and the name of this one really gives away what musical it's based on. And we shot and recorded our music video ourselves in under three hours, and it's preposterous. It's so good, I can't believe we did it ourselves. So I'm really excited to put it out. We're just waiting for, I don't know, things to be more lively before we, we release it. So Right. Hey, All I, right. I hear a vaccine's coming. <laughs> That's what I heard. 90% effectiveness. I, I can't. I we'll, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I'm not... I, I honestly don't think it's going to be ready until like, like generally speaking, I don't think until the middle of next year or late next year. No, no, and I'm not going to be the first one to take it for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to be there. <laughs> Politicized vaccine? No, thanks. I'll wait. I, I got to backtrack a little bit to Justin here and saying that he has trouble drinking beer that isn't made by someone he knows. So how does this work in practice? So you just sort of <laughs> like, do you got any brewskis? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I was, I was just kidding. <laughs> he, oh, shit, here comes Justin again. Hide he, your shit. He probably, he probably just goes to the breweries and makes friends with everyone so he can get free beer. I mean, that's right. that's the musician's way. 
He does really well at it too. We're uh, we're probably pretty close to getting a once upon a flatline brew made. Justin's friends with all of the the brewers in Buffalo. I have a couple of brewery working friends. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> but I, not that was that those relationships are not based on the fact that they have beer. I simply became friends with them and then discovered they worked at breweries and then started drinking all their beer. That's convenient. <laughs> cool. It was a coincidence. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have to wrap it up because we have another one coming. But before we go, I just sent through the chat that video. I want to get your reaction to it. Oh, fabulous. Let's see. Only Canadians will really get it. But if you're from Buffalo, you'll probably get it too. Are you going to show your screen or something? No, no, I just it. They don't. I, oh, one second, my uh, this is gonna sound bad, but my dog's gotta take a shit. I gotta open the door. So, Karina, <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you remember we had a whole conversation with the guy from this Ben Weaver? It's grammatically correct. Awesome, that's wonderful. Rena, you got anything else? No, I'm I'm good. I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> what Chris was doing? There was some. Weird... I have no idea. Sorry. Oh, that was the, sorry. That was like... the video he sent over um, oh, that okay. I was playing. Oh, yeah. he did this uh, I said out it. for a sip. <laughs> out, out for a rip, are you, bud? I was I was gonna tell you though. We had a whole conversation. Remember with the guy from Grim Reaper about his dog shitting? Yeah, that's uh, true. <laughs> A lot. If there was baby shit, there was public shit, there was dog shit. A lot of excrement in that. <laughs> he sent me a message like two weeks later when I put it live, and he's like, I never really had a whole interview about shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. what we do best. Thank so, you. Uh, this I already a, got the bumper, Chris. This is why we call it a, a casual conversation instead right. of an interview. <laughs> it's sort of like <laughs> Okay. I'm pretty relaxed, honestly. Cool. Well, enjoy the rest of your day of probably flurry of interviews. And uh, <laughs> party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. Hey, thanks for Bye. joining us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys. It was great meeting all of you. Hopefully, we uh, we talk again. Absolutely. I'll send you a link when it goes live. Rock and roll. Thank you guys right, so cheers. much. Bye now. Cheers. Bye. We'll get to know you. <laughs>